The green team is on a roll. First the 1080, then the 1070, then the 1060, and now the biggest and baddest of them all. The brand new Titan X based on Pascal architecture. So how much do we know? How powerful will it be? How power hungry? Price? Let's figure this thing out. Let's start off first with the design. The new Titan X is sporting a similar build to that of the 1080 with a few minor changes including a darker brush, however staying consistent to the edgy metallic theme of its younger siblings. While there aren't many pictures yet to confirm this, we can expect that the Titan X will also include a matching backplate. Now let's jump into the specs. Right off the bat, 3,584 CUDA cores. Absolutely insane considering the 1080 already proved itself by crushing the current competition with its 2,560 CUDA cores. Remember, these aren't scalable across generations, so that the Maxwell Titan X packed 3,072 CUDA cores into its GPU, but fell short of the 1080, which had fewer. NVIDIA's 16 nanometer Pascal design proves its worth here, greater efficiency and performance with less under the hood. The Pascal Titan X will boast an equivalent amount of VRAM to that of its predecessor, a whopping 12 gigabyte in total, although this time around that 12 will be enhanced with the GDDR5X, accelerating memory speeds to 10 gigabits per second, mirroring that of the GTX 1080. However, thanks to its wider 384-bit memory bus, the Titan X is capable of 480 gigabytes per second. The way that you can convert that is to start off with 10 gigabits per second, that uh, simplifies down to 1.25 gigabytes per second, and then multiply that times 384 to yield the 480 gigabytes per second. And keep in mind that you won't notice these distinct differences when actually playing games unless you plan on playing with some outrageous 3-4K monitor setup, which would be outrageously awesome as well. Taking into account a clock speed of 1531 MHz as well, NVIDIA have rated their new king at, prepare yourselves, 11 teraflops. Compare this to the 9 teraflops floating point performance from the 1080 and roughly 7 from the old Titan X. Remember, teraflop values are only one side of the coin. We have to consider drivers, game optimization, a lot goes into quote unquote ranking a graphics card. But what I will do is this, use pre-recorded GTX 1070 and 1080 and 1060 3D Mark Firestrike scores to extrapolate, a fancy statistics term there, Pascal Titan X performance. The GTX 1070 received a 3D Mark Firestrike 1.1 score of 16,089 when paired with an i7-6700K overclocked to 4.6 GHz and 16 GB of 3000 MHz RAM. The GTX 1080 received a score of 19,521 and the GTX 1060 scored 11,612. If we take into account the CUDA core counts of these three GPUs, we can construct a semi-natural logarithmic proportion, bear with me, I'm an engineering major, where X is the CUDA core count of each GPU and Y is the finalized fire strike score to project Titan X performance. What you're about to see is not an official 3D Mark Firestrike score of the Titan X, it's just an estimation. The official score of the card will vary to a certain degree when it is finally released. So with 1920 CUDA cores for the 1070, 2560 for the 1080, and 1280 for the 1060, and 3584 for the Titan X, Whew, I need a breather after that. We can project Titan X 3D Mark Firestrike performance to fall somewhere around the 24,000 mark. This simulation actually calculated 24,059 to be precise. Nonetheless, the Pascal Titan X is sure to decimate any single card thrown at it. And without an answer from the red team expected any time soon, this could be great news for the green team's market share, although I'm not sure many of you are going to be able to afford this card, let alone desire it given the price tag that you're about to see. Now a card this powerful will require power. It packs a thermal design power rating of 250 watts, a splitting image of its former self. Keep in mind that TDP is not the same thing as total power draw, so under full load this card will actually draw more than 250 watts from a power supply. TDP is just a an estimation for how much power in the form of heat the card will dissipate while under full load. The card will also require a single 6-pin and 8-pin combo of supplementary power, again identical to the former Titan. If Nvidia grants third-party access to the Titan X early this time around, which it did not for the previous Titan X, we can expect dual 8-pin connectors for beefy coolers and beautiful LED illumination that will certainly need the extra power. And finally, price. How much you ask? Well, it's not cheap. You ready for this? 
1200 US dollars. And to my friends in other places, you'll almost certainly have to pay even more. The former Maxwell Titan was in a class of its own last year. It was twice as expensive as its 980 Ti counterpart, who performed admirably when overclocked with third-party coolers, but barely edged out wins in most scenarios. This time around, Nvidia's betting on the added GPU boost behind the Pascal architecture and quite a large number of CUDA cores. We're looking at a solid performance improvement over the 1080, a substantially higher number of compute cores, but again, a substantially higher price tag. You tell me if it's worth it. Stay tuned for August 2nd. If you liked what you saw in this video, I had to scramble to make this thing as quick as possible because the announcement was just a few hours ago as of recording. It's 12.18 here, Central Daylight Time. But if you appreciate the video, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if you don't or if you just hate everything about life. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you have it already and stay tuned for interesting stuff here on the channel. We're going to do all kinds of things. We're not just going to stick with computers. The name's Science Studio, so let's stay true to that. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.